I grew up in the Bronx, New York as a young person on the streets of Mohegan between 179th and Honeywell. And it was on those streets that I discovered that I had a real passion for, uh, I didn't know what it was at the time, but I loved fabric and clothing. And I would go outside and sit on the stoop with friends. And while we're talking and hopscotching and double dutching, I would actually be sketching outside. And I take a pad and a pen out every day and I would sit on the stoop and just create all these wonderful, I don't know, concepts, ideas. And then I went a little further and I started uh, working with my jeans and cutting them and embroidering them by hand. And I always had a knack for uh, crochet and knitting. And so sort of, I didn't know what I was doing, but I came to find out that I really wanted to be in the fashion business. And the way I found out was, you know, it's very interesting how uh, we are affected by the current culture. And what I was affected by was a movie that came out featuring Diana Ross and Mahogany. And at that time I realized, oh my God, there's a place for my talents. There's a place where I can actually be one with the things that I've been doing that I could not identify. There was uh, no one on my block who was a designer or even sold or had a tailoring shop. So I really didn't know what it was about. And then when I saw her, everything clicked for me. I think I was 13 years old. I was sitting in the Dover Theater in the dark. I had paid my dollar to get into the theater and have my usual popcorn and soda and there I discovered myself and I really identified with Diana Ross and Mahogany at that very time and I went on a quest from that time from the moment I identified with that movie I knew I wanted to be in the fashion industry so everything from that point on became I'm no longer a tomboy I'm really a fashion diva traveling the world very much like my icon Mahogany so when I got to high school uh, there was an opportunity to join a program called the Executive Internship Program, which I did. And I asked them to give me a designer. I said, you know, I really want to be this designer. This is my passion. And they said, oh, but we see that you love to dance and you have all these extra extracurricular activities as a dancer. We're going to put you in a dance studio. And uh, just uh, I found myself at that time saying, you know, if you don't find me a designer, then I'm just just send me back to high school. I mean, you know, if you're not gonna find what I want to do so they called me Monday and they said listen we got a great designer for you and you have to be down there tomorrow for your interview so I got on the train I went to 42nd Street and for the first time I gone downtown by myself and I look for this building I find it 537th Avenue <clears throat> and as I walk inside there's this beautiful marble floors and these gilded gold doors and uh, elevator operators in beautiful uniforms and I had literally entered a world I had never seen before in the garment center and they took me up to the 17th floor I never forget and I got off in the hallway and I looked for the sign for Vera Maxwell and Vera Maxwell was the first designer that I ever worked for I was very very lucky she was an incredible woman she was maybe in her late 70s when I met her with this beautiful silver gray sinyong and she wore black cashmere every day with these beautiful little slippers. And I entered the showroom and I waited for her and I came in and she says, oh, you're princess, blah, blah, blah. I said, yes, I am. So she says to me, tell me, what is that in your hair? Is it macrame? And I thought, what is macrame? And I said, well, no, I explained to her, this was a corn roll and it was a style very popular back then, which started here and sort of spiraled around my head and ended up in the top. And I had on a black cow neck and little burgundy pants. And I said to her, what is macrame? Like, what are you talking about? I'm 16. And she explained to me that the stuff that they make the plan hangers from, which she had hanging all over her showroom, was created from something called macrame. And this was really became our first cultural exchange. And years, I stayed with her for many years, maybe three and a half years, and I went from the gopher, I went for everything. I went for coffee, I went for tuna sandwiches, I went for the paintings, I went for the, whatever they sent me for, I went, I came back, I brought back the receipts, and so I became trusted, I had a level of integrity, I got to work on time, I worked five days a week for no money. We had, in this executive internship program, we got a uh, train pass, and I worked so hard, she says, Princess, I know I'm not supposed to pay you, but you worked so hard, I'm so guilty for not paying you, we're going to pay you, just don't tell anybody, and I got a whole $80 a week, and I was so excited because I felt independent. I was doing what I loved. I ended up working in the showroom. Uh, I was responsible for getting all the accessories for all the fashion shows that came up. I met the most incredible fashion designers along the way. 
and that started my career in the fashion industry. I stayed with Vera Maxwell for um, three and a half years, and then I left to go on in the undergarment industry. So it was an exciting time. It was a blessed experience. I say to young people all the time, take advantage of internship programs when they're offered to you and know that they can really, really change your life. Vera Maxwell and that opportunity changed the life of Princess Jenkins forever. <laughs>